the founder of Puravada Bracelets. And back in 2010, I love this sort of entrepreneurial story. He was finishing his final year at San Diego State University and trying to figure out what to do with his life. He had spent the last of his savings on a graduation trip to Costa Rica, where he crossed paths with two bracelet artisans named George and Joaquin, who were living in poverty. George and Joaquin made beautiful, colorful, handmade bracelets that seemed to capture the essence of their journey. So Thal took the last few hundred dollars in his bank account and asked the artisans to make 400 bracelets. Upon returning to San Diego, Thal got to work selling the bracelets. They built a simple website, took orders online, and with no money to advertise, Thal promoted his lifestyle brand on social media. Over the next nine years, Thal built Puravada into a $68 million company with supply continuing to come from George and Joaquin, who now employ, by the way, 1,000 people. And in July of 2019, Vera Bradley announced their acquisition of a 75% stake in Puravada bracelets for $75 million in cash plus a $22.5 million earnout, which equates to a little more than nine times that year's adjusted EBITDA. One thing that's important to note here is that Puravada created a novel subscription program, which offered loyal customers a new selection of bracelets and other goodies each month. And at the time of the Vera Bradley acquisition, they were doing roughly 15% of their revenue in recurring revenue, meaning through the subscription services. So I think the great takeaways here are, do you have a subscription for recurring revenue model in your business? And if you do, uh, how can you improve it or increase your recurring revenue model? And if you don't, how can you adopt one? How can you build a recurring revenue model? If he can do it with bracelets, you can do it too. To communicate what we do at Foresight CFO. So we, we basically use the numbers to help CEOs do the things on the screen, you know, win more customers, keep the ones they have, uh, have access to capital. So that, you know, the, the big story. And we, we do this through growth CFO work and accounting work. So it goes right to what Loman spoke about. We're making sure you have good numbers and then forecasting forward to make sure that, um, you know, that, you know, your how much cash do you really need? What are you going to use it for? And then have a mechanism, you know, like, like a scoreboard, using those monthly financials every month to make sure that we're getting the results that we expect from the, the funds that we received. Uh, and, and these are the habits of profitability. These are the, you know, when we do this with CEOs at every stage of the business, um, you, you get the results. You have visibility and you get confidence to, to execute. And we, we do it from, you know, we go beyond what an individual CFO can do because, you know, literally, I, you know, I'm limited by my, my own 30 years of experience that when I have a true team of CFOs where there's two or three CFOs who are making sure that we never get, get comfortable, that we never, we never get into that status quo mindset. We're always in, in 90 day sprints pushing, you know, taking that next step. That, that's the benefit of a, a, a true team of CFOs that can beat an individual CFO I, I, any day of the week. And we, we do it in a way where you stick our necks out, right? You, you, there's, there's an investment for growth CFO services that we're accountable to deliver, you know, increase profitability, accelerate cash, and, and maximize the value of your business. So.